Before setting up HeDimax print server, I have two direct connected printers on my system. An Epson dot matrix, and a Samsung laser printer. Insert the setup CD. Select Run Auto Run. Click Ignore at the ActiveX warning. This alert is on the background music file format. You can click Yes if you prefer it to play. I will click No here. Move mouse cursor over Router and Print Server. And then click on this Print Server model, that is PS1205MF. Now we will install two applications from the pop-up window. First one is the client 3.1. It contains the driver and utilities to communicate with the print server. Accept all defaults and install. We need not to do any setup at this stage, so, just minimize the pop-up folder that have been created. Next. We will install the admin 3.2. This is an easy to use GUI application for setting up the print server. Again, just accept the default and install. We have yet to plug in our print server. So click cancel, when choose print server dialog appears. On the next pop-up, click resume to complete the installation process without selecting any print server at this stage. Now, we are done with the application installation. This is the first print server that I am going to hook up to my network. The last six characters on the bottom label is this server's ID. I plug in the LAN cable from my network router. power cable and the USB connector from my Epson printer. You will see the status light on server's top panel starts blinking. Wait until the status light blinking totally stop. It will take approximately one minute. Now, launch print server configuration, the admin application which we installed a while ago. You can see the print server ID is now recognized and shown in the name field. The printer server ID will also shown in the network ports quick setup utilities. Anyway, we will stick to the admin application for setting up as it is much easier and comprehensive. If your printer is compatible, in the printer status tab, you will see its status is indicated as ready. For some compatible printer you can test print right away from this control application. The test print tells that the printer is now connected successfully to the print server. Next, we need to link it to the network, so that everyone in the network can print to it. The most versatile way to set up the link is through TCP IP. This method is universal and available in almost all operating systems. Click the IP config tab. Select manual, key in the fixed IP address that you plan to use on this print server. The IP range and format are router make dependent. If not sure, please refer to your router's user manual. Gateway is your router's address, of which you access your router setup panel. For subnet mask, set it to 255.255.255.0. After double checking the input data, click right. and then reset, 
to program it into the print server. After the print server reset, click on print server status tab. You can see here the active IP has changed to the fixed IP that you have just input a while ago. Printer status should also indicating printer is ready. All the above procedure is for the print server setup, you only need to do it once. The following steps, which get the computers ready to print to the server that we have set up, need to be performed on all computer devices that you wish to print to your print server. Open the devices and printers control panel. Click add a printer. Click the printer that I want isn't listed. Select add a local printer or network printer. Click next. Select create a new port. And pick standard TCP IP port from the drop down menu. Key in the fixed IP address that we have assigned to our print server. For port name, you can make changes to it, but for now, we shall just accept the default. The system will prompt for further port information. Select Custom, then click the setting. In another pop up, select LPR protocol. Input lowercase lpt1 as Q name. That's all, click OK now. Next, the system need to install the printer driver. Select the appropriate brand and model from the lists. Or, if you have the driver on a CD, click have disk and insert the CD. Click next to proceed. As I already have the driver on my PC for the direct connection printing, the system is prompting me whether to use the existing driver. Accept it by clicking next. Input a suitable name, so that you can easily identify it, as a network printer. Click next. Share the printer. Click Next, and you are done. Go ahead and do a test print. This time, from Windows Printing Environment, not from the Print Server Control Utility. The eDimax network printer have been successfully added into the Windows printer list. The eDimax print server can be used with more than one printer. After setting up my Epson dot matrix as network printer, I am now unplugging the Epson printer's USB from the server. And plug in my Samsung laser printer's USB. Make sure your printer is switched on. Now, if you refresh the printer status tab, you will see the printer name changed from Epson to Samsung. Click Add a Printer. Repeat the setup procedure we did for Epson earlier.
for port name, as the Orto created name with IP address has already been taken up by the earlier Epson printer. The system adds a suffix of underscore 1, to differentiate the newly added printer. To demonstrate that the name can be changed, Let's change the name to Samsung here. Remember always select LPR protocol and input lowercase lpt1 as Q name. Here I select my Samsung ML2160 driver. Again, I add eDimax in front of printer name to distinguish it as network printer. I do not want to set this as default printer. Now we can see the new Samsung network printer appears in the Windows printer list. We have successfully set up the print server to print with more than one printer, just alternately plug in the printer you want to use into the print server. I shall do a test print from the Windows printers panel, to show my Samsung laser printer had been successfully connected to the network. Another scenario, is to have multiple print servers, which connected to its respective printers. This can be easily configured with the print server utility. As you can see, we currently have only one server been set up, which is now connected to the Samsung laser printer. Before we get started with the second server, let's double check, click refresh. From the name column, it is confirmed that we have only one server listed now. Now we will plug in another print server, it has another unique server ID as printed on the lower label here. I am plugging in another LAN cable from router, and the power supply. And wait for the status startup blinking light to stop. Ok, now the blinking stops. However, when you click the server name drop down button, you still see only one server name listed there. Click refresh button. Now, the configuration utility recognized the newly added print server. Let's select the newly added server, which ID ends with D7. It has been auto assigned with an IP ends with 1.107. Printer status tab shows offline, as we have yet to plug in printer to the newly added server. From here, just set up the newly added printer accordingly with procedures demonstrated in the earlier section. While the eDimax print server need to be connected to the network, via LAN cable, printing can be done from computers that are connected to network, either through cable, or wirelessly. Here is a convertible computer, that is connected to my office network through Wi-Fi. I have set up the eDimax connected Samsung laser printer in this tablet PC, using the method illustrated earlier in this video. Let's send a test print from here.
Hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.